The global markets are extremely volatile. We have seen an incredibly wild ride from 2018 all the way through into 2019. There have been geopolitical tensions, stock market fluctuations, important indicators flashing red, and a long list of other factors piling up. There remains one question. Can the Federal Reserve do what no central bank has ever been able to do in the history of the world? Well, you came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to talk about the asynchronous collapse which is at hand. It is important to follow all of the details, whether you're looking at geopolitical, whether we're talking about the economic indicators, or the anecdotal evidence that has been piling up. I like to look at the second and third tier of all of these, and that tells you a very important picture, but you gotta piece it together. That's really what the Money GPS channel is all about. We're looking at the details from all of these different levels, and I wanna get into it right away. This is talking about the 2 and 10 year yield curve inversion. For the 10 inversions back to 1956, the S&P 500 topped out within approximately 3 months of the inversion 6 times. The S&P 500 took 11 to 22 months to peak after the other 4 inversions. There is this repeated meme that I've been seeing over and over again. You're hearing it, the talking points, they're coming out there suggesting that there will be as much as 22 months for the recession to kick in now that this indicator has triggered. Of course, that has happened before. But as I have said numerous times, I would not, absolutely not focus on the amount of time. It could be anywhere from 3 months to 22 months. That is a range that is absolutely too wide and it is no indication for you to take on any amount of time in here. So as far as I'm concerned, the amount of time is not significant at all. All it tells you is that we are now at the end end of this cycle. That's it. That's all you should gather from this particular indicator. The market dropped by 800 points in one day as soon as this triggered. And I think that's ridiculous because it should have already anticipated that the day before, the day before that. We saw this thing falling further and further and most people got triggered on a particular day. I mean, it's nonsense as far as I am concerned. Northman Trader, we've never faced a recession with so much debt and so little Fed ammunition available with negative rates still in effect in many places. There's no playbook for this. Historic data will be of little use. So I do believe that the Federal Reserve, other central banks around the world will have to start buying assets. This will be of all kinds. We'll see what they actually plan on doing. I wanted to show you the progress on this. We are now over $16 trillion of negative yielding debt. 28 percent of outstanding debt right now globally is negative yielding 28 percent we are approaching one third of all the debt in the world actually giving you a negative return that is completely insane i bet there would be no economist that would have ever predicted that this is happening imagine as the months go on this number is going to get higher and higher and higher we watch all of these different indicators that are triggering right now people should be definitely paying attention to this i mean look at what you're seeing the sea of red all across the spectrum in Switzerland right now. If you go from the one year to the 10 year, all the way down the list, Japan, Germany, Austria, Netherlands, all of these are giving you a negative yield, even when you're going as far out as 10 year. Even Italy right now has some of these negative yielding bonds on the shorter end. This isn't a good thing. That's why you're seeing a lot of money flowing into the United States right now, because if you want some yield and safety, apparently, quote unquote, safety, then much of that has been seen in the United States. Fed may not have enough firepower to prevent a recession. Can you believe it? The mainstream media is actually suggesting this. Well, okay, so think about what they've done. The Federal Reserve has brought interest rates down. They call it a mid-cycle adjustment. We all know the reality of the situation. But zoom out a little bit, and you see that all central banks around the world are doing the same thing. They are engaging in the same exact policy, which is basically to create a new quantitative easing cycle, okay? So 10 years of it wasn't enough. They're going in, and they're going to actually inflate this bubble beyond anything we have ever seen before. They do not have enough firepower, and it is my belief that they will go to the next step next time around. The Federal Reserve, along with the other central banks around the world, will be given permission, and actually the public will beg for it, for them to buy assets. They already did this with the toxic garbage nobody wants to buy, but now they're going to do so with your seven shares. They're going to take those seven shares, and they're going to buy them up. 
the public is going to love it. Even though it is actually a loss of sovereignty, it is actually a recipe for disaster. You are taking an institution that sits outside of your government and they are going to print money out of thin air and they're going to buy up shares. Who knows what else? Maybe they'll buy real estate. I don't know. But they're going to do so and they're going to be hailed as the heroes. As a result, this is crazy, but we're watching it happen step by step. It's an asynchronous process. People who are closed-minded are never going to see it happen. Even after it does, they're going to look back and they're going to get this convoluted message about how this all fell into place. The Russell 2000 small cap index has been a great leading indicator for stock markets in both directions. And we saw it last year before the big decline in the stock market in the fourth quarter. In September, the Russell 2000 topped out and rolled over. The S&P 500 followed suit in October. All right, so this is an issue here. Always keep an eye on the Russell, even if you're not invested in it, okay? Because these are telltale signs. When the Russell 2000 rolled over and broke to a new lower low, that's when the whole market started to really fall out of bed and we are seeing a similar situation right now. When the S&P went to make a new high in July, the Russell failed to do so. Now it's rolling back over and it's testing June lows. Keep your eyes on the Russell 2000 and of course I will track it here on the channel for you but it's important to always keep an eye on different markets that are outside of the ones that you invest in. Okay, That goes for the Wilshire as well as the Russell. Ray Dalio says he wouldn't rule out China weaponizing its massive U.S. Treasury holdings. Okay, they pushed him on this subject and he said, I wouldn't rule it out. He didn't say that they would do it, but he just said, I wouldn't rule it out. And I wanted to clarify this here because I think it's important to see what China has. I just did a video yesterday talking about how they are actually going ahead with the same process over the past few years, eliminating some of their U.S. debt. This started at a peak of $1.3 trillion, actually over 1.3 trillion. And over the years, they've been going further and further down. Now, will they use that against the US? I don't see that as necessarily going to happen. They're not just going to drop their holdings in one day, although they could do so. That's all I wanted to mention. Okay, they could do it. But will they? It's not likely. Okay, but you could say that will a battle between these two countries exist at some point? Not likely, but it could happen right now. It looks pretty heated. So I think that's just something that I wanted to acknowledge about what Ray Dalio had said. Now talking about China and the US, check this out. Only a small percentage of soft good tariffs are actually getting delayed until December 15th and none have been removed yet. Of the approximately 789 apparel and footwear categories on the original latest list of tariffs, only 17% have had tariffs delayed. So we need to know what's really going on, not just what we're hearing, not just the talking points, not just the news, but the actual data. This is part of it. He made a good point right here. and Basically what it says is that there is no customer appetite for price increases. So of course, we will see how adding additional tariffs will in fact increase prices that the customer pays. There's no other way around it. There's no way that a company is going to actually cut from their profits. It's not possible, not going to happen. Their stocks will tank and then they'll have to lay people off. And of course, we have an economic problem as well. Either way, it can't win. This article here is talking about the businesses located in Beverly Hills. We're talking about these luxury brands and how they are impacted by what is happening today. At one particular store, purchases by Chinese clients are down, quote, maybe 40% this year over last year. And another individual said that the decrease in both Chinese and Saudi business may be 30%. Another one said a significant decrease in Chinese and Middle Eastern customers. We've got problems right now that are extending further beyond what you're necessarily seeing in the news. And this is that type of anecdotal evidence that people should be paying attention to above you know everything else that we're seeing but how does that impact the real economy what's really going on well americans crippled by debt and seeing signs of a slowing economy are sitting out on pricey vacations and everyday leisure activities a new bank rate survey found 42 percent of americans decided not to take a vacation over the past year because of the cost we have watched as all of these new incentives have popped up for people to go on vacation you're able to finance this thing for the next 50 years if you want but they're not doing so at the rate they did before because they know something's going on they're feeling it and of course you can see that all popping up here right now 
but you don't have to worry because the robots will come to help you. Machines are taking over a giant Chilean copper mine replacing about a third of the workforce as owner Coldeco struggles to keep its title as the world's largest producer of the metal. All right, so we've got a particular commodity that is extremely important globally. And this is one of the places around the world where if the supply chain is disrupted, the price is immediately affected. And by the way, this goes for any metal or any other in industrial commodity. Just look around and actually try and see what is provided by some of these countries, how many jobs this provides. And of course, if the prices go higher, how that will impact all of the construction costs and materials and so on that are required in other particular countries. So if China's importing a lot of this, all of a sudden we've got a big issue. Now, look at what is happening with the robots, with the automation. It is in fact replacing jobs. In this case here, the world's largest producer of copper has eliminated a third of the workforce. That's not good. Now you might think, well, hey, this one particular country, they're getting screwed over, not my problem. They're doing the same thing everywhere. Everywhere this is happening. And these machines are not being built in the West. They're not pr probably not being built in the United States, okay? So it's not producing any jobs for anybody. That's it, video's done. If you found that informative, hit that like button. I really do appreciate that very much. When you do so, you're helping to support the channel. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need from top to bottom A to Z. All the details are located at the link in the description. You can get the audiobook at themoneygps.com. If you want to learn how to do business on Amazon, if you want to sell products, if you want to make passive income, I have a free e-course that's available to everybody. It will be the link in the description at the very top. Click on that and it will take you over to GPS University, totally free. If you want to know what's going on in the economy, in the markets, this video breaks it down. Check it out. I will see you over there.